Welcome back to the COS Business Podcast, the number one podcast in Colorado Springs. Today, our highlighted sponsor is Cars Helping Charity. Well, today we have a very special guest, Miss Rebecca Milner with Epic Eyewear. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your business. We did some research, of course, because you have a really epic story. Um, <laughs> and it's just a really cool story. And I know you're 10 years into your business, but take it from the top. How did you start Epic Eyewear? Yeah. So, um, so Epic Eyewear, I was a part of the original crew that opened it. Um, we were working out of my house at the time, but it really wasn't my idea. Um, my ex-husband started it in my name and he, I don't know if you really know the story. <laughs> Maybe we <laughs> but, don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he, uh, he anticipated getting sued by his former business partners. So he put it in my name mm. and then sure enough, we all got sued. So, um, we spent like the beginning of the business uh fighting with his parents <laughs> oh. so so his parents were part owners no his parents were they owned a different sunglass company and he oh. was partners with them it, so, conflict of interest kind yeah. of thing going on and i was just kind of like naive at the time um didn't really know what i didn't know and mm -hmm. um you know it, it, we were we've probably been married for like three months and i was just like oh yeah your parents are bad I'll help you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and that kind of um, mentality, not really knowing what it would look like down the road. Mm. Um, so, you know, I own Epic Eyewear. I helped start it. Uh, but uh, in no way did I set out to sell uh, $20 men's safety sunglasses in 2014, uh, which was what we started with. Um, so that was the core product. And we called everybody from the yellow pages back then and just tried to get places where the buyer would answer the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, so for months, like while our product was on order in China, I would literally highlight and copy the yellow pages and Ooh. paste it into a Excel sheet and then yeah. upload it into a CRM. And, um, you know, it, it was like very, uh, Archaic, grassroots. Almost, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like this, like list buying and all that stuff mm -hmm. like that. It was like, we didn't have any money. And so, we were just highlighting build your own list, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, but it worked, um, you know, in that first six months, I was certainly wasn't the sales engine. I was the doer, not the seller. I kept the salespeople freed up so they could talk okay. to people. So you yeah. built all the list for the salespeople. Yeah. Okay. And you know, all of the invoicing and administrative stuff on the mm -hmm. back end. Then I even built our first website, which was terrible. It didn't even have like a checkout. It was more like an online catalog. Um, but yeah, so 10 years ago, that's really how it started. Um, if you wanted to fast forward, you know, we did grow really quickly, but we had terrible business practices. Mm -hmm. Um, to me, it would be like everything not to do. Obviously don't, um, steal your competitors list and then go call their customers and undercut them. That's mm -hmm. very bad. I got sued. Well, we didn't get sued for that, but, um, you know, that was, the crux yeah. of them getting upset with. Yeah, that's our not team. necessarily illegal, but it, it Correct. it's kind of. Yeah. It, uh, and, the dark. I, and I'm <laughs> exaggerating. We didn't like straight up take their list, but we knew they called golf courses. So we, and they knew who the best mm. ones were because they had worked with them before. Um, so what we got sued for was something called the Latham Act. And it, this we certainly did not do. Um, the accusation was that we called misrepresenting ourselves uh, and rep acting like we were that company. Mm. But you weren't, though. No. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. We wanted yeah. people to pay us. So if we were acting like them, we're not going to get the money. Right. <laughs> well, it's a free market. I mean, it's, it's perfectly fine to, you know, not, I don't know about fine, but maybe it is fine, you know, like yeah. it's perfectly legal at least, you know, to go and try to pitch your businesses to, for sure, to, to competitors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what makes competition makes good business. That's yeah. the 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 best part about capitalism. Yeah. <laughs> this 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 like bubble of people back then, it was really kind of like a, you know, just they were out for blood. They were all mad at each other and used the legal system to hurt everybody involved. And mm -hmm. you know, it sucked. Um, it was pretty miserable. But we were like growing so fast and didn't have you know, short of like, it almost fueled, I think, the energy to grow. Mm. Uh, the salespeople, it was like they hated that other company. And it was just, you know, if they were losing an account to them, it was, 
they were relentless. Um, so it was a different kind of sales energy and I wouldn't recommend it, but it, yeah. you know, it's like where we were at the time. Um, so that would have been the 2014 to 16 era. We're going to take a quick break and thank our sponsors. Pinnacle, Pinnacle Advanced, Advanced Primary, primary care. care. Skip the healthcare hassle with Pinnacle Advanced Primary Care. Direct primary care for a simple monthly fee, putting health first. No insurance needed. Experience personalized care that's as unique as every individual. Visit PinnacleAPC.com to learn more. That's PinnacleAPC.com. Franchise, franchise Succeed. Succeed. Grow any business with Franchise Succeed. From development to expansion, turning small businesses into national brands through franchising. Start scaling up with a free consultation at FranchiseSucceed.com today. That's FranchiseSucceed.com. Planet Duct. Duct. Breathe easier with Planet Duct, Colorado Springs' premier air duct cleaning service. Powerful vacuum trucks rid homes of allergens and dust. Clear the air by visiting PlanetDuct.com. Mm -hmm. That's PlanetDuct.com. Dot com. Com. Epic, Epic eyewear. eyewear. Elevate style with Epic Eyewear. Innovative designs meet unmatched quality, ensuring a great look and better vision. Discover your next pair of shades at EpicEyewear.com. That's EpicEyewear.com, spelled E-P-O-C-H, Eyewear.com. And we're running a special discount right now, Andrew. It's COSBP15 for 15% off your 15 order. 15% off your freaking order at EpicEyewear.com. We're in the sunglasses right now. If you're watching, listening on the audio, de definitely check out the video so you can see and check out how epic they are. E-P-O-C-H. Eyewear.com. Mm -hmm. Eyewear.com. Now we will get back to this episode. 2017 was like a still a strong year. Um... I would say the end of 17, beginning of 18 was where that initial partnership kind of had the wheels falling off. Mm -hmm. um, I was burnt out on the fight like against that other company and just hating them. Like I, you know, my whole thing when we started was that we wanted to be better than them, not mm -hmm. lower our standard and be like them and just fight mm -hmm. and be miserable and petty. Yeah. yeah. So I was kind of like, we've been doing this for four years now. Like life is good. Let's move on and like not be living in this negative mm. fight what, with these people. What was the pivot? Um, well, I think the pivot was honestly like at that point, we had a little over a million dollars of debt mm. and we had, I think, about 19 people working in the company. Um, 2018, we had we did about three hundred three and a half million dollars in revenue. And we weren't profitable. Oh, geez. Yeah. yeah that, that's so, gotta hurt. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, I was kind of like, hey, this isn't working. Like, mm -hmm. it, I know you're excited and we're saying we're having huge growth, but we're, everything is a disaster. And um, I was in a bank meeting. So um, I, my background was HR. I did HR for the military. And then I did HR for Quicken Loans in Detroit after I graduated college at Wayne State. And I didn't have like a business background. I was like, I really like problem solving with people. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't so good at problem solving in my marriage because we were getting divorced in 2018. <laughs> um, but we were in this bank meeting and most of your listeners probably know this, but if they don't, I'll just give like the quick um, scenario. Like when you have your line of credit with a bank, typically it's backed by some sort of collateral, your inventory and your receivables, and they loan you so much based on you being able to repay them. And I was in a meeting with our bank and we were trying to borrow more, never paying down the credit line. And they said something and I was it like clicked in my head what they actually meant. And I was like, oh, no, RAR isn't due in 30 days. I was like, some of this isn't due for like seven or eight months. And they're like, what? And I was like, yeah, like if somebody wants something, then they sell it to them and put it in as an order. But then they call our manufacturer and try to get it. It's not even here yet. And they're like, wait, so you have invoices attached to items that have no cost of goods. And it was like, like to me, the light bulb started to click like because before I just it's I hate it feels embarrassing now, but like I was managing our books like a checkbook. <laughs> mm. I didn't know. And so um, for me, I had to learn all of that. But in this like turmoil of family drama and marriage drama, I was like, we are really I can't swear in the first 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> <We're> really, <laughs> we really F. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it 
it clicked though. And I told the bank, I was like, oh no, like, you know, our AR is $700,000, but probably about 200,000 is coming in in the next 30 days. And there, it was like, you know, this, we were not all speaking the same language up until that point. And I don't feel like we did anything, at least I certainly didn't like anything malicious to misrepresent what we were doing, but we were certainly over leveraged in our credit line. Mm -hmm. Um, so at that time, our top sales guy, I honestly still really like think he's a great guy, but he was a raging alcoholic and I had to fire him. Mm -hmm. Like we'd given him, you know, paid time off to go to rehab and really tried to get him through it. Um, but ultimately he just was like a cancer in the business, like the way he was at that time. Mm. And um, so, you know, of course he was like pretty mad when I let him go and I'm getting divorced. We lose our top sales guy. Oh, man. The bank <laughs> is like, what's going on? You know, <laughs> like not happy. And um, a lot of fires are going on. Everywhere. Oh man, <laughs> a mess. And uh, a few days later, uh, it's like end of July, beginning of August, I think. Um, my ex-husband called the company and said, Hey, I'm, I'm starting another company. Good luck. And doing the same thing he did to his parents. Yeah. Oh, and so he went and started sunglass company number three and Jeez. I was kind of left holding the bag. So that is how I, um, got Epic Eyewear. <laughs> okay. That is a and that's story. why my life sucks now. <laughs> hey. wow. But, um, yeah. So you know, how did I start it? Like, that's the story. And I don't even have a PC way to say it because it sucked. And I don't, I, I was never passionate about sunglasses. Mm -hmm. um, I was never even really passionate about business. Like, if anything, I liked people. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, when I worked at Quicken, kind of problem solving, doing reviews, you know, career planning for people, I loved that. Like, to me, it was really fun to, see someone else's situation and figure out how to make it better. Being in the thick of that, I don't, I'm not very good at it. Mm. <laughs> um, I would say even with my own team members, um, it can be difficult for me to do that. Uh, Business is difficult. Yeah, for sure. Um, but so 2018 is where I started to learn business and take this one on on my own. And mm -hmm. It certainly came with a lot of problems. So it's been a learning like journey ever since. Mm. But they say that e-commerce is one of the hardest industries to get into, especially as your first business. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a challenge because there's just so much that competition. Be, competition. I mean, you're learning how to sell something off a website as opposed mm -hmm. to like fulfillment for a service, right? So yeah. that's a little bit nerve wracking because you got like the shipping, you have the manufacturer. You got to figure out the taxes. I mean, returns like, and returns. <laughs> yeah. Ret oh, it's, it's, it's a lot. So I'm assuming those are all part of the learning curve. Did any of your ex partners, husband, they, did they ever like give you any insight? Obviously this was sunglass company number two for him. Yeah. Did he help you at least be like, okay, this is kind of the nature of the business. This is kind of how it works or anything like that. While you guys were working through that when he was still oh. a part of the company or. Well, up until. So the actually the core of our business is wholesale. So e-commerce mm. is about 5% of our business right now. I wish it was so much more. Um and that's actually another challenge to my company is the a lot of our competitors and the bigger brands you see are mm. probably pr like doing maybe I'm totally guessing here but For I sure. would say like 80 to 90% e-commerce. Oh wow. And then the the other part, you know, I'm, I want to say the other brands that are popular in that 20 to $30 price range. Gotcha. You'll notice, um, man, I hate saying other brands because I don't want to promote them, but like blenders, for example, I was thinking that, yeah, they were always that 20 to $30 sunglass. They got bought out by a factory. They're doing more wholesale now and okay. they doubled their prices because these products aren't priced well for wholesale at $30. There's not enough margin in it for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. both yeah. parties. Um, it's great price for e-commerce. For sure. Yeah. Um, but so for us, 
you know, like I said, the business model had quirks from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, so now I'm trying to introduce prices or products that are priced more appropriately for wholesale and e-commerce. Yeah. And, um, is that two different storefronts? Well, it is. Yeah. So wholesale, we manage that team with, uh, account managers and independent reps. Yeah. And then e-commerce is done on our Shopify store. That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. So, but all fulfilled out of the same warehouse. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I love that. I, the last uh, winter, I really dove deep into e-commerce and was, uh th that was like, I was going to aim at starting an e-commerce brand. And I was like figuring out how to find a, a good product. Um, but I think ultimately it comes down, you obviously want a good product, but ultimately it comes down to the marketing, how to really get it out there. I think like, because even with a mediocre product, if you have great marketing, you, you're you going to sell a lot. Yeah. I feel, you know. <laughs> you know what I think? Um, There's this girl in Denver. I like following her on social media. And she's, um her name's Leah Kay. And I don't, I don't know a ton about her. Literally, like Instagram. I did her Brand Builder Academy. And I, I think she's super smart. But the thing that like makes me jealous about her business and other e-commerce businesses is like they started with something they were passionate about. Mm. And so you've got the girls doing hair ties or, you know, yeah. like someone like making dope teas. It's like a reflection of their own style. Mm -hmm. What a lot of what we've sold over the years up until recently has not been a reflection of my style. So oh, okay. to hop on social media and plug your product, I'm like, this doesn't look good on me. It's not. You have to believe it. For yeah. Sure. And I think it looks great on a lot of other people. I know the quality mm -hmm. is great, but. Um, yeah, I'm like looking this, pretty fly the, right now. The glasses you guys are wearing, I actually <laughs> really like wearing that pair. And that's one of the styles I added. Oh, nice. Um, since I've it. been running the company, but um, like the sport styles in the beginning mm -hmm. or even the men's um, lifestyle products that we still sell. They're great. Um, they don't fit my face because I have a little face. So, you know, now I'm starting to introduce things that I feel comfortable wearing and confident in. But um, yeah, like getting through that season, I was very much running somebody else's company yeah. and being passionate about it and excited or. That's what gets you through the hard times is the passion. But you still got through the hard times, though. Yeah. The, my, <laughs> I wasn't, it wasn't passion. It was fear of like bankruptcy yeah. and homelessness. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good driver, too. Yeah, it still is. Yeah. Um, I feel that. Yeah. yeah. But so, yeah, 18 um, was interesting because i i didn't i still didn't know what i didn't know mm -hmm. um i got through the end of the year kind of felt like i made some hard decisions to get us in a good spot for 2019 and um that was really tough because we had sunglass company number three enter the market and um you know create a lot of turmoil mm -hmm. within customer accounts and and he all knew all that. the like connections that you yeah knew, so. yeah even i was at a trade show in las vegas and um one of the guys was like uh hey, your ex-husband's going to start another company. And in my mind, I was like, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. You already like, felt good that. Good luck yeah. to him. He's like, no, like he is. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, what? And it was kind of like, man, I'm an idiot. Everybody knows. And I don't know. Um, and it just, it was a really weird time. So here mm -hmm. I am like plugging along and kind of hoping for the best. Like, hey, don't do anything crazy. This mm -hmm. is still how our kids eat. Um, you know, yeah, that yeah. type of situation. And this this company was happening and my customers were finding out, my vendors were finding out. And I was like the only one who mm. didn't know. Um, Anger can be a driver, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Eminem's an example of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we. Uh, got through 19 um, with a lot of unexpected like challenges. And then I was like, 2020 is going to be the year. And then COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Man. But. Um, Bleep that. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost every. I just don't like the algorithm hearing COVID. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah just, the C word. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. That was a joke. Yeah. So I'll, I'll probably leave it in. <laughs> but no, it's I mean, so. 10 years in business, like there's always challenges, but um, <laughs> Man, sometimes it, I'm almost sick of talking about these things because I don't want to sound like a victim. Like I'm still learning and hopeful and I certainly feel like I'm growing personally. Mm -hmm. But um, it's. It's your story. Though. It's a Yeah, it's like the the truth. And I, I'm not very good at sitting there and acting like everything is exciting and happy. You need to actually <laughs> be a realist, which is a good yeah. thing. And for a lot of business owners, it's really important for them to know like what was business like before 
during and, and after COVID if you were technically in business for all three of those mm-hmm. phases. Yeah. Because they were completely different. I feel like the world's never been the same since 2019. No. Never, right? Yeah, not at all. I mean, not even the way people like consume anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> for me and my, that's how we met in 2019 because I was doing my tiny house festival. Oh, you Still guys know down. each other? Or knew we, each other? We, I met her. I told her, yeah, I met her in 2019 because I wanted her to, I think I was just wanting you guys to be a vendor at my show or something yeah. like that. It didn't end up happening. But that's how I stumbled across your company. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. And like, just like, I, I love the, the sunglasses and seeing someone local do something like this. E commerce is, mm-hmm. it's awesome to see someone be able to, you know, go through the lengths of being around for 10 years, first and foremost. Yeah. But like, when COVID hit for me, my, I lost so much money Mm -hmm. and it was like during the time it was march 2020 right yeah where i had spent all the money to put the event on and then you know COVID happens and everything gets canceled and all the vendors like i want a refund i'm like i don't have your money and they're like okay well we're gonna sue you then or do chargebacks on our credit card and i'm like what am i gonna do i'm just gonna i'm just screwed so i went from like some money in the bank account to like negative 10 or negative five figures in like a week oh and it was just like what the heck is going on and so Going through that and then seeing what happened after that. It's just like those phases have been just, I don't even know how to describe it. We will, we will probably tell our grandkids about this time, yeah. and what that was all about and what the world and how it's changed and mm-hmm. how has it changed for you? I mean, even during COVID was during COVID. I mean, a lot of your stuff's wholesale, so I can assume it probably hurt you a little bit more than if you're majority e-commerce, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Well, the, I mean, a big time, like I said, it's we're maybe 5% mm-hmm. e-commerce, so the majority of the people we would do business with were closed. Uh, so that was oh, interesting. wild because all those wholesalers and yeah. you know what? It, so we had the year of COVID, which you kind of got like the PPP band-aids and, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you're trying to keep everyone there and, you know, don't leave. Everything's going to be OK. Um, and what we found was that in the beginning of 21, the election was in November 2020, people we're still really reluctant, reluctant to like assume what it was going to be like in 21 because of the election cycle. Mm -hmm. So, you know, usually January picks up a little bit for us. February is good. Then March we're like, okay, everything's going to be okay. And it, it, people just didn't know what the world was going to look like. So 21 was really interesting and Honestly, we had our expenses in line. So 21 was a really strong year financially. Mm -hmm. Um, Like we didn't generate a ton of revenue, but we managed everything well. Yeah. Um, You had been doing a lot of repairs the last few years. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I have been cutting expenses since 19. Mm -hmm. Um, But 22 was really the one that hurt us because I sent a big deposit to or a big balance payment to a supplier to deliver product in April. Mm -hmm. And then she kind of got real slow answering emails and, uh, you know, there were issues. I don't think the product was ever finished. She lied to me, uh, but we ended up getting it in like October. So we couldn't service a lot of the customers Mm -hmm. that we had that whole summer. And I know that a lot of like, if you're getting overseas shipments, a lot of those were slowed down too. And there were some shipments that were sitting outside of the coast of California. Yeah. For like six months yep. or something like that. Just waiting for their turn to come in or whatever. Yeah. Like, I, like what are they just hanging out inside the ship? You know, and that's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they had kind of we manufacture in Taiwan and China mm-hmm. and they had quarantined the different like I can't remember if they call them provinces or like yeah. counties, basically. Mm-hmm. So if, you know, the lenses were being made one place over. You mm-hmm. might not be able to go get them because if you leave There's your chaos. little area, they're going to make you quarantine in a hospital for weeks or whatever. Mm-hmm. So there were a lot of, I don't know, just things that were outside of our control that were like hard to navigate. Um, now I understand like and have some different connections and recourse if I have issues like on the other side of the world. Mm-hmm. But then it was just overwhelming it was like when am i ever going to get a break everything's bad yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's never going to get better but yeah 22 was the one that hurt us the most i Mm, think interesting so the trickle down of everything and then 23 it was like all right this is the new norm suck Mm. it up (laughs) (laughs) what what do we do in 24 uh 24 so far 
Okay, so this is where I'm at mentally after <laughs> <laughs> the roller coaster all of, this. of all of this. Yeah, and actually, I yeah. heard like a Gary V clip this morning too, and he was <laughs> like, "You don't build culture with snacks and happy hour or something like that." You know, yeah. he's like, "You build it by like listening to people." And I, I really, I don't know. I've had some people that I love dearly in the business, and like I never could have imagined the business without them. Mm -hmm. Um, that are not with us now. And I, I think I have to like put on my big girl pants and be people's boss, you know, mm -hmm. like it, I, being nice, isn't going to get me the results I need. I mean, certainly being mean isn't, but you know, managing more than like working side by side. Yeah. I very much, I think at least sugar-coated things or mm. maybe been naive myself even um or haven't pushed people as hard as you know i mean being challenged is a good thing um you know yeah. sometimes you need a break i get that you know but allowing people to not work to their full potential is bad for them and for the business yeah. so um i think i've learned a little bit as a manager too i'm sure Oh, I, I have, I know I have a lot of growth to happen there, mm -hmm. but, um, I think getting through this season, I'm like, there's no more. We're learning. Like we are doing the work to learn, not just that's the excuse of why we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think getting through those tough times in 22 and 23 and 24, where I'm rebuilding now is more accountability and like intentional growth, not like just being the buddy boss, I guess. Mm. That is that makes such sense. a great lesson. I have 100% gone through those sim same things where I've lost people in my businesses where I thought I wouldn't, like when they left, I thought like I've lost my identity in my business. In fact, when I lost them. Um, so that's a really good point. And it is like, you. Do, I feel like sometimes you feel like a little bit of the, the identity of the business is probably wrapped up with them, which is probably a little bit true. Yeah. But like it, the accountability, like you're talking about and the intentions of, working with people and like being like, this is going to be really fucking hard. Yeah. And the, probably the hardest thing you're going to do, but it could be the most gratifying thing you're going to do. Yeah. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is what it's going to take. And there's no other way around it and not giving people, I guess the best way to say is like lowering your expectations on things yeah. for people just because they're doing certain things like, well, they're the best, but they have these issues, but they are the best, you know? And I think, I, that hits home for me a hundred percent of the time of like, it's like, no, like this is what my standards are for myself and my businesses. Like, why am I, why am I like lowering my standards for that? Yeah. This is like my dream too. Right. Like, and so if no, and especially for you, like this is all your business now. Like if they're not going to buy into that, then they can, they can leave, yeah. you know, they're not going bankrupt with me. So exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, it, I, you guys have probably experienced this, but what, I've, I've told people like this last round of hiring is I don't always know what to ask for. I know that certain processes that we use would not work at Amazon. So you can't tell me you're doing it the best way. And certainly we don't have the resources that a company like that has, mm -hmm. but we should be able to do things efficiently so that we can scale. Like if, you know, that one person always has to be present to get the thing done or when they're gone, right. we don't know those little one off things that they do. Um, that doesn't, it's not good for the company. It's systems. They get that. Yeah. Systems. So that's, I think I'm, I'm trying to build the expectation with people coming in that I need them to do better than what I'm already doing. And mm -hmm. I don't know what that might be always, but their job is to, figure it out with me problem solve you yeah know, make it their baby and like i think if they take ownership in it, it's like your job is to make from where it is here to build it to here yeah you know mm -hmm. like that's your job is to yep. make this whatever your space is make it better but you have to be a problem solver and you have to have grit you yeah. know a lot of people get along in life because they're very smart but they're lazy and they and which is a good thing in a lot of ways too right because they figure out the <laughs> easiest way yeah. and the quickest way most efficient way to get through things but you want to have grit even in your team you right. have to have grit you have to have okay whatever it takes mentality it's five o'clock i know it is but like i committed 
to reaps to do this job. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And it's, I'm going to, if it's due today, I'm going to get it done. I'm going to stay behind. That's the type of people you need. Yeah. Well, I team. think some, I think some people are those types of people, but I think there's, you sh- should have other, that's not for everyone either. And there's probably roles for people who they don't need grit. They just need told what to do. And yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and I think too, different people are at different seasons in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, like one of the girls that has worked with us for the last few years and, you know, I would consider her a friend. Uh, she just, she resigned. And when she came to me, I was almost like, I'm so glad because <laughs> I, all I can think about is I need someone who can do more. Yeah. And yeah. Not in the sense of skill or ability, but literally just time mm-hmm. and energy because you know, she had, um, she was in school and what she started out as a full time employee where we were talking about it's going to be overtime in the summer and, you know, you'll have a lot of downtime in the winter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she couldn't give that anymore. And it turned yeah. into me picking up the slack or other people in the company mm. and it just didn't work. Um, so, you know, I think hopefully when she gets into the next season of her life, that is who she is for her next employer or yeah. for herself if she starts her own company. Uh, but she just couldn't, she didn't have that to give us right mm-hmm. now. And we're small and we're struggling. So sure, yeah. it, that's the only person I can have right now. Um, yeah, exactly. That makes perfect sense. But like, on the yeah. flip, last week, I didn't have anybody to work in the warehouse. And I was coming off of like two or three weeks of really late nights uh, packing. And so I threw up a Facebook ad and I was like, <laughs> hey, I need help today. I will pay you yeah, cash. Yeah. <laughs> like if you can like stand on your feet and read, like show up. And I found a guy who's just an absolute rock star. And That's I was awesome. yeah. And so I didn't even tend to like really hire whoever I already had a guy he just was in his like you know waiting period of starting the new position and um anyways we'll we'll probably keep this guy on through the summer at least because cool. um, yeah. he just came in and killed it and I you know I don't know any part of his story but he showed up and has been happy to be there ever since and I think too as a business owner it's like this COVID era we weren't as busy as we needed to be and in my company's situation, and this is something I don't know how other small business owners, I would love to get the other people's perspective on this, but I feel like um, when revenue was higher, I often gave raises. You know, we're not like Google or a big company where we can give out a raise every year just because you've been with us for a year. Unfortunately, I hate that. Um, but what I realized is I was doing that because I felt like it was what was I was supposed to do. Mm. And I think people got priced out of their job a little bit. Mm. Um, Like I wouldn't say they weren't worth it. Mm -hmm. Like they're probably worth more, but what the company could afford to pay um, was less than what they were getting paid. Mm -hmm. And so then you get slow during COVID and now they're not even producing as much as they used to. And it's this like, and they're still getting paid the same. though. Yeah. But they get, they get kind of like almost, man, I don't, I love the people. I'm not trying to say anything bad about them, but it's almost like some complacency settles in and you just get stuck in the routine and you're not Mm -hmm. growing anymore. And you're just, we're all like waiting for it to change and not doing anything to make it change. Right. Mm -hmm. So meanwhile, you're hemorrhaging your money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But so to have some people show up and just be totally pumped to work, I'm like, Well, I haven't seen anyone work this fast in a really long mm. time. And it's um refreshing and I bet, it's yeah. like some good energy in the building. So I'm I love go getters. I, I just yeah. I love it. I love that mentality of someone who's gonna like be like, Hey, I ran to the problem. I already fixed it. Here's my solution, or hey, I ran to the yeah. problem. Here's what my thoughts are of the solution. I love that because I what I find myself as a person in a leadership position, I'm like, I don't want to stumble a problem across the problems for you. Yep. Because I don't want to feel like I'm looking over your shoulder. Yeah. You know, like you need to find your problems and yeah. problem solve or at least present a solution and then bring it to me. I'm happy to go through that with you, but I don't want someone just to stop. Yeah. Oh, there's a problem here. I, I can't in this season of my business, at least like I'm just I don't have patience for that anymore. Yeah. You know, well, and I I told um our new guy that started today, I, I was like, I have, I have decision making fatigue. I don't I don't care what change you make. Like if you change it and think it might be better. And then we find it's not. That's okay. That is mm-hmm. so much better than you asking me to figure it out. Right. Like <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm, I'm so burnt out on all I see 
all I get to see are problems. And mm-hmm. there's so many good things happening. So that stinks. But it's like, oh, like, you know, we've got to improve this on the website, but I'm not a website expert. So mm-hmm. it's like the last time I talked to one, I didn't know to ask for that. I needed that person to tell me what I needed, yeah. not wait for me to know what my problems were. Um, so I don't know. It all comes back to just learning, I guess. And I like I certainly want the company to grow. And so I'm, I'm thankful to run into the problems, but it is mm-hmm. exhausting. That's that's business, though. <laughs> yeah. Like this is this is great stuff like that we're talking about, because I think this is what people like to hear. They like to hear that, you know, just because you're a business owner doesn't mean everything is great, you know, and like doesn't mean you, it also doesn't mean that you're making a shit ton of money either. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, and it means that all your yeah. credit cards are maxed out at all times. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, I'm dealing with that right now. And and yeah, so I, I I'm gonna do something new right now. Uh we're gonna take a quick break. We like to take a quick moment and thank our sponsors. Redefine, Redefine mortgages. mortgages. Redefine the home buying experience with Redefine Mortgages. Custom solutions, transparent advice, and even seamless process. Mm. Start the journey to home ownership at redefinemortgages.com. That's redefinemortgages.com. Neon, Neon Pig, Pig Creative. Creative. Bring brands to life with Neon Pig Creative. Dazzling designs and strategic marketing make businesses stand out. Spark creativity at neonpigcreative.com. That's neonpigcreative.com. Exponential Exponential Impact. Impact. Fuel startup success with Exponential Impact. Mentorship, resources, and support available to amplify impact. Mm -hmm. Join a community of change makers at exponentialimpact.com. That's That's exponentialimpact.com. Fast Fast Signs. signs. Fast Signs can help you with all your signage and visual marketing needs. Whether you're starting a new business or just need a signage refresh, let Fast Signs help you. Make your statement. That's fastsigns.com. Cars Cars Helping helping Charities. charities. Cars Helping Charities is a turnkey fundraising solution for nonprofits. Cars Helping Charities allows your nonprofit to accept vehicle donations, which are sold, and then the funds go to the organization. Mm. CHC is partnering with my nonprofit of choice, Mattersville, Mm -hmm. to help them raise funds through vehicle donations. Please consider donating your car to support Mattersville. CHC will pick up any car, an old clunker you have sitting in your driveway, or a car you just don't feel like selling anymore. Make sure to visit Cars Helping charities.org that's cars helping charities.org now let's get back to the show and now we're back <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh that was good yeah i had a quick thing too um because um do you know who cody sanchez is do you know who that is at all i don't i'm not i don't think so Female entrepreneur but she Female gary v kind of kind okay. of yeah. no, she might be I somebody you, like want to follow yeah but- her husband's a navy seal she's just awesome but she's more about the like the business acquisition side of things okay um, but she has a lot of cool little things that she says. And I like the saying that she says, it's not how, but who. I think that's like such a brilliant way to think about things. So like for us as entrepreneurs and business owners, it's always like, how do I fix this problem? Like, oh, do I have to learn web design? Like, yeah. do I have to learn this, you know, whatever it might be, right? Manufacturing, wholesale, e-commerce or whatever it is. It's usually the answer if you're doing the job as an entrepreneur is who. Yeah. Who can I get to solve this problem? Not because if we're trying to learn everything, it's good, right? We we kind of have to have general knowledge of everything, especially in the beginning. Yeah. But like ten years in, you got some of your your systems in place already. Yeah. Maybe the answer is now not how, but who. Yeah. Who can do it? And then again, it goes back. Who can to do who's, it better? <laughs> who can do better? And who's actually competent in doing it? Right. Yeah. I think that's probably some suggestions for you. You know, as you're moving through this phase, because. That is quite the milestone. You should be one. You should be pretty damn proud of yourself for Thanks. ten years into a, a yeah. business. Like that's incredible. It is. Yeah. It is pretty. I don't know. I wish it felt better because we're still very much in a. Um, I would say it's just a. Mm-hmm. We've been stuck in a hard spot for so long, and it, every year it's like I think we're going to get there, you know. And I I still have that hope, and I feel that way. But it would be really nice to like. Mm-hmm. have some money in the bank and be throwing a big 10 year party. But I'm like, I don't think we should, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, that's smart now. Cause now yeah. maybe before you might've, and you, and then you would be like, Oh crap, six months down. Like I should have yeah. spent that money. And now yep. we're in the whole, but now you're learning and that's mm. part of the process yeah. too. Right. We did throw a big seven year anniversary party. <laughs> and I gotta be honest, I think most of it was because like my divorce was final and I just felt like <laughs> mm-hmm. I just want to like breathe. You know, I want something about this to feel fun. And that was like a, and honestly, we had some really cool people, people I respect and, you know, helped the company a lot on our team at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, they're not working with us anymore. We got, I kind of couldn't afford them anymore. And then also 
they've got some cool things going um, in town that maybe would be a cool person for your podcast. Ooh, we love we love yeah. cool, cool yeah. people. Like cool people yeah. <laughs> um, they have like a, a gym in town called the Wilson Brothers Grappling, but okay. um, he's from John Wilson worked with us at the time. He's from Colorado Springs. And that was such a fun time in the business. Um, but so stupid. The idea that I, <laughs> no, not him, um, but me like spending money on like the parties and stuff like that. Yeah, it yeah. was just like, um, I don't know. We had this idea, like when you see the e-commerce brands just kind of like, you know, throwing money out to like make good content and stuff like that right. it was kind of like my idea. Like if we spend it, it'll happen. And um, that wasn't the case for us. Mm. I think sunglasses are really saturated and there's a ton of competition mm -hmm. and Morocco, I think, does some sunglasses. Yeah. Our buddy. Yeah, Steve oh, Morocco. OK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a ton. I think I mean, I know of at least two brands in Colorado Springs. Um, sounds like you guys know of one more, which would make three. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, there's Denver, Boulder. I think he's like all over. He's, he's pure e-commerce, so it's probably not even in. OK. It's probably not. It's probably just the nation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's there are a ton. So to get recognized and come up online, you have to spend a lot of money or like find your niche of where people are going to find you. So I don't. Certainly, mm -hmm. I guess anyone could get their viral video that makes it click for them. But I think so, it's pretty so tough. Death Grip. We had Death Grip there. They do uh, wax for like mustaches. Okay. They really branded themselves for mustaches. They have other products, too, but it's yeah. mostly uh, uh, waxes. He, he said they had like, was it 60 million uh, views on a video that he did? And it's he was actually surprised at the conversion rate. It wasn't as what he expected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like for us too, we've paid influencers and um, done different mm -hmm. paid ads. And the only time it's ever clicked for us is when it's been somebody who found our product before we found them. Oh, and where really? it's a genuine like so how do you wearer. How do you create those situations, you know? It's it's organic. <laughs> yeah. And one of them, this would have been like 2015 or 16 era, was a motorcycle uh, rider, philanthropist. Mm -hmm. And he's got, I, I think, maybe like 5 million followers across all his platforms. Um, but he really helped us grow our social media to where it is now and yeah. um, had a huge impact on that retail, mm -hmm. whole, you know, e-commerce mm -hmm. aspect. Um, our biggest influencer right now. And, you know, it's still e-commerce is a small portion for us. But when yeah. they post, it's like we yeah. want every day to be like this. Um, it's a rancher in Texas and he bought our glasses at an Ace Hardware, which okay. um, Ace Hardware's, I wish we were in more, but, yeah, yeah. um, the ones that we have are great customers and great accounts. Um, but awesome. he was wearing our sunglasses in a video that went viral. And so we saw him wearing it and we reached out and he's been plugging yeah. us ever since yeah influencer so, marker is real it works i mean yeah. i'd love to get you connected with bobby from uh sheath underwear yeah he's he's really like he i think he's really figured out a sweet spot he knows his niche you know it's it's men's underwear so he's on comedy podcasts which are probably majority men men listeners audience it, like especially the ones he chooses which is pretty raunchy comedy uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah he's really locked arms with some great partners and i think yeah. All it takes is just the right connection cuz he I've I've had multiple conversations with him like even outside of on the podcast where he's talking about it's like it's kind of like a gamble. You like you don't know which one will work, you know. It's yeah. Like, and sometimes he's like he's like there's a few that we're sponsoring that feels like more like a charity, you know, and like all these kinds of things and like it was just it was cuz he wants to make sure it's like actually converting, you know. Yep. If the numbers aren't converting then it doesn't make sense for him to sponsor something. Right. And it's 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 interesting, you know, and yeah, I'd love to connect you with that. Yeah, you know? that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. We and, you know, you're always trying to get your content to what were you saying? Stop. Get, get people to stop. Oh, yeah. Pattern scrolling. interrupt. Yeah. Pattern, stop the scroll. Pattern yeah. interrupt. Mm -hmm. them. We did um, a photo shoot in December and we were just like looking for stuff for people to wear. And we found these like underwear sets. If you've been in Shields, you've seen them. They're like the they've got the food underwear and <laughs> stuff like that. And so we had like some pretty good looking guys and girls wearing the funky underwear. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I feel like this is really fun. It's not on brand with like who we've been before, but I was like, this is exciting to me. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, like I said, I'm still kind of figuring out how to help the brand evolve into yeah. something I feel genuine about, um, you know, genuine excitement towards. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so maybe we can do some sheath underwear. Yeah, um, a, co collabs. a collab. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and marketing is about testing and seeing and yeah. trying new things out. And if it works, then 
Did you double down on that I or mean, you try variations? Wearing sunglasses in your underwear is like kind of quirky and fun. And yeah. I think it makes great pictures. <laughs> so for sure. <laughs> he has some outdoor photos recently and they're wearing, I think they are wearing sunglasses or they should be. They're like on a beach in their underwear. Uh -huh. or whatever, and why not wear sunglasses? Yeah. It'd be a great collab. I think that would be, and you guys are both like kind of springs ish based there in Woodland Park. But yeah. It's like, yeah. That'd be a ton of fun. <laughs> yeah. For sure. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, we got to make sure to connect. Okay. Do, do that connection. I'll just find them on social media. Yeah. Yeah. And you can find them too. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> we'll bring them back in th this year, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll probably bring them back as a guest. Maybe even a sponsor back on a sponsor. There, there you go. go. <laughs> now you guys can wear underwear on your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be a fun one. Like, <laughs> Everyone will just look just naked. Look naked. Under yeah. the table. It gives me an excuse to, to start working out and, you know, yeah. get, get a good body. <laughs> you can just get, there's got to be like a spray tan place in town. You get those spray oh, yeah. tan abs. Oh, you I'll, just AI, I'll just AI the, <laughs> yes. with Sora yeah. on there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he does edit the episode, so yeah. yeah. Some fun stuff with it. <laughs> just replace someone else's body there. Yeah. I'm curious oh, yeah. um, <laughs> about you know, you're going through a lot of these times. I mean, that's a lot of stress, a lot of time of being like, you know, like you're talking about and a lot of our listeners, including Andrew and me, like we've understand facing bankruptcy and maxing out credit cards and like back up against the wall. Like what vices have you been able to help you get through those, whether it's, you know, going to church or working out or go you said you like to golf. Like yeah. those, those aren't vices. What, what things do, what things do <laughs> yeah. you think would be best to like help you? Man, I, you know, what really stinks like this season right now, um, it, I, I haven't worked out in like the entire year. I just feel like all I do is like work mm -hmm. and sleep and mom. <laughs> it's, it's pretty like, I'm like, how long is this season going to be? Cause this sucks. Um, but I, I don't know. That. It's, I think the thing that right now is what I keep holding on to is how short the seasons that felt really heavy before felt like, and, and it's almost distant. It's like, mm -hmm. I remember it sucking so bad. Um, you know, 2018, 19 era, I was just living for the weekend and, mm -hmm. you know, getting happy hour started at like nine 30, 10 in the morning yeah. and on Friday, <laughs> <I feel> and, <laughs> you know, it was like, uh, just get me out of here, yeah. um, you know, and then, you know, I I feel like you get I got through that. And then it was like, OK, I'm going to journal. I'm going to be a amazing, journaler yeah. Yeah. and I'm going to work out every morning. And I really like that season. I want to get back to that season, but I'm pretty tired right now. Um, but I, I think in reality, like for me, it's just realizing how short all the shitty times are they like, pass, as yeah. you get through it. And it just mm -hmm. is a season. And I think if you if you decide if you focus on the suck, it, it will it's probably last longer. Yeah. But if you just keep plugging away and knowing that you mm -hmm. can get through it, it's it's more of a than the military. They always they do resiliency training, and it's like when you get the negative thought, you immediately tell yourself it's something different. I think yeah, I'm like a it. gratitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm almost like a glutton for punishment. I feel like at this point, like I, I don't I even <laughs> like we just can keep doing it. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just telling my friend uh, the other day that owning a business is not really conducive to good mental health. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like if you want to have good mental health, don't start a business. Like yeah. you're gonna go through some shit and it's gonna be rough, but you know it's definitely worth it. You know. Yeah. And there's some great things that they I just you're gonna be stressed, and I just had that thought. It's like. Even Elon Musk says that, like he's one of the most successful entrepreneurs on the planet, you know, but when Tesla was going to be bankrupt, it was not fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it, he, he, his mental health, sac he had to sacrifice his mental health in order to make Tesla, you know, what it is today. Yeah. You know? It's insane. <laughs> For sure. I mean, and I'm only doing sunglasses, but I don't know, like there's certainly days where I wake up and I look at it, I'm like, my eyes like look older you know it's yeah. like I'm, I'm literally just wearing myself thin but i i certainly don't i mean i hate to keep saying the word bankrupt but it's like when you're just getting through the thick mm -hmm. of things right it's like i gotta do this like if i were to quit tomorrow it's it, there's no turning back you just gotta get through it right. so um you know that's 
and I'm probably being a little dramatic. It's been a rough couple of years, you know? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. I, I feel exactly but what you're saying. And I think a lot of business You're either owners doing do. it or you're not. Yeah. And when, especially I think in a product-based business where you put up so much money mm-hmm. and, you know, for us, this is another COVID impact and probably other, um, you know, product-based manufacturing businesses have experienced this, but our lead times went from, mm-hmm. you know, 45 days to what, you know, 90, which always turns into 120. And then the boat's late. And then they show up in October. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> that's just money that's you can't get a return on. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually costing you money. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's just, you know, figuring out the new norm and I don't know, working your ass off. <laughs> when I sit in this in the suck, like you're talking about, sometimes I wish like I journaled the other sucky times. Yep. So I can kind of gauge, like, okay, this mm-hmm. time's pretty shitty. Is it worse? Is it better? I yeah. feel like I've been through worse. But sometimes I wish I journaled like what it was like so I can go back and refer to it and be like, oh, this is nothing. Like, yeah. I went through COVID and I was helping care give for my grandfather and he was actively going through dementia and dying. And like I was cha- like it was just crazy during COVID. I feel like that was probably the hardest time for yeah. me. Yeah. And oh. so I think it's good to like reference those times like I've been through worse. And yeah, I yeah. think when it, you guys are right about the mental health thing for entrepreneurs but i definitely think there's a there's something to be said about like the strength that comes from being an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. because sometimes when i hear like normal people's uh problems with whatever like oh Susie, my coworker said this and i'm like that's not that big of a deal yeah you know (laughs) i feel like you know the the problems you face as an everyday business owner are like so high and low it's just like insane right it's like either the best day of your life or the worst day you know all the time yeah all the time yeah it's just so up and down (laughs) but so i feel like that builds a lot of mental fortitude yeah and yeah. so there's something to walk away from no matter what happens from here on out you know yep. so i'd like to add a caveat to what i said too it's like although it has been very stressful running my business it's been the most transformational time of my life i've grown the most than i ever had from running my business and it's been an amazing ride but you know i'm actually pivoting a, kind of away from my business right now um i actually have two two part-time jobs that i've gotten in the last week where but it still feels very much like my business though. Yeah. And and I actually I was gonna go down the traditional way of trying to find a job, but I pay I feel like I still paved my own path because I wasn't finding anything that I liked when I was going like through Indeed and all that stuff. And you know, not the pay that I wanted at all. So I just basically tapped into my own network that I built with my with with my business in the last five years. And I was able to structure jobs that basically do what I already do, but it's more stable. Yeah. And so I, I, I need this stability, stability in my life right now. And I'm, I'm actually very excited um, where I'm going with that in my career, um, whether, what, whether it leads to, you know, uh, me realizing what I need to do in my business or whether it leads to me being, you know, you don't need, maybe I'm not a CEO, maybe I'm a, more of a CMO, a mm-hmm. chief marketing officer aspect. And that's, I'm perfectly fine with, with that if that is the case yep. but I need to figure it out you know yeah. <laughs> and I need the stability because I'm almost to bankruptcy <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah it's been it's, I, yeah. I think it's interesting though too um I would say there's been tw- like two times in the last four years five years where I was like okay I should have listened to everybody and gone bankrupt like yeah back then it's not the end of the world too it, but know? But I've always gotten through it. Yeah, That's yeah. what I mean. It's like when you, even though you feel like you're there, I think um, I hear, I've heard my t- company's really small. So if I use examples from in, in, internally, <laughs> it's if people are gonna be like, she's talking about me. But, um, <laughs> you know, I think, I think sometimes it feels like there's not an answer, but it might just not be the one you want. Yeah. And so, you know, where you're like, well, I can't afford that. Well, Maybe, can you afford a version of it that, you know, isn't what you would be your first pick? Mm-hmm. Um, there's often a solution that just wouldn't be, you know, you can always, you can always find a solution yeah. for the most part. I've, and I've done it for five years, you know, and yeah. I've, I've figured it out, you know, or things just end up working out. It's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I agree yeah. with you. And then you're like, man, that was quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so like, I'm not shutting down my business by all means, but like, I'm just not really it's not gonna be my main focus anymore yeah and like i'll still take on you know jobs for for videography but i'm excited to figure out where where things are going to go with this uh new path that i'm on i guess you could say yeah (laughs) and it's 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 actually kind of relieving to be honest (laughs) yeah 
Well, I always get kind of, I wouldn't say jealous. I'm happy for people that are in this situation, but maybe like a little bit of like business envy when they're like, well, I got to leave. I didn't take any money out of my business for two years. I'm like, well, like how, like I didn't, I just, I didn't know to, that that would be a good idea. <laughs> and I even look back and like, why don't we borrow money out of our house? Like if we were all in on the company, why did we go get a bank loan and bring in a partner and right. do all of these things yeah, there's, yeah. like that just really weren't all in like options. They were like keeping it comfortable, but ultimately weren't the best solution mm -hmm. for the business. Um, so I don't know. There's, you don't know though, right? Yeah. Like how are you supposed to know? If you don't know what you don't know. That's the first exactly. thing you said when you yeah. first got into this. You're like, I just didn't know what I didn't. It's like so true. Yeah. And 10 years in, whatever it is, there's still so much to learn about your specific industry. Yeah. Let alone business alone, right? Like yep. keeping your talk about like, it was kind of like a, I thought I was doing it this way. And maybe that was not the right way because the way that orders come in. So on. So it's just so different Yeah. than say my business. I'm agency where it's just, yep. it's just different. I know I recently... And it took years of me not feeling like the books totally made sense. Like they were accurate and they were right. But I was like, no, I need somebody who is like understands manufacturing and products. And right. now, mm -hmm. like when I'm hiring for support staff and things like that, it's like if you've worked in a product based business, you're on the top of my pile because it is different than working in a retail location here and having managed inventory like that is different than sourcing and, you know, Mm -hmm. having all the lead times and accounting for that is totally different. So, I mean, it's only taken me 10 years to learn that, but <laughs> now I'm like, these things are clicking and it, mm -hmm. I think it'll be really, you know, finally understanding what I need to know for my specific business. Yeah. That's incredible. That's awesome. And I think there's some great things that are coming from this year. And what I realized, cause I'm kind of in very, it's kind of funny. We have a lot of parallels with our businesses, but in September, I had like a big realization that I kind of had to kill off the version of Marcus that was in September and go through whatever my next transcendence of being a new leader would be. And it was very painful mm -hmm. to do that. But I feel like since I've done that, everything in my life has kind of started to really pick up and grow. I'm like, okay, if I want the goals to be this, then I need to really pick up the volume in this. And what does that actually look like for me to do that? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that really changed. It was really painful, like I said, because it was like, and it's still, I'm still going balls to the wall and probably will for another like five or six months, which sounds awful right now. So I'm just head down. But like for you, if you were to accomplish those goals in maybe 11th year anniversary, or maybe even this year, whatever you say, yeah. like, and you can kind of bring all your dreams and throw something that's really great you can be proud of that the business could afford. What would the next 12 months, we'll say 12 months, what would that look like for yeah. you guys in your business? Well, next 12 months, I like my goal is still focusing on debt, unfortunately, which stinks. Um, yeah. I've really I've got to learn to say no. Um, when I was at Quicken, one of their like isms was <laughs> yes before no, like be a yes person. Like, let's not shut down ideas immediately. I have to be a no before yes person because I am the I mean, you can call me for a sponsorship. And then like at the end of the month when I'm writing checks, I'm like, how many people is I, I say yes to? It's like, you know, I, <laughs> I, I I'm like, oh, that sounds awesome. Of course, we want to like give you money. And then I do it to the detriment of even if they're great organizations and opportunities, it's like I just can't afford to do those things. So I'm, I need to learn to be a no person, focus on the debt. And I think what brings me the most joy in the business is I, I really do love seeing the people I work with, like be happy and grow. I think that got stagnant in the, the last season. Um, and unfortunately, we've lost some really good people. I think, I mean, it was the right thing for the business and I hope for them as well. Uh, but I want to be a good leader and create opportunity for the people. And I want to be able to do things that mm -hmm. give back. So, uh, you know, some of the organizations I've been able to do, like, sizable for our organization donations too. Um, oh, you know, awesome. I, I might have to say no this year, but my hope is that, you know, maybe we can create our own event that will help give back and do something where our team can be involved. Um, so where the, the parties were a lot of fun, I think we could use that money maybe for good to help fundraise. Uh, but those are like, like to me, raising money and helping people grow and, you know, be able to take vacations with their families or buy the house that they want, you know, things like that. That's really what I want to see happen from owning a business. Um, 
I don't know. I'd like for my kids to have some, you know, Roth IRAs and <laughs> not have to face the challenges I did when I was getting out of high school. And, you know, I grew up in a little town in Michigan. Like my family, I, I don't, I would say we were like lower middle class. I feel like my hometown didn't have a middle class. You we were like poor or rich. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> we certainly weren't rich, but, um, you know, like I just, I didn't know what I didn't know. And there was no financial plan for me or college or anything. And so I just hope that, you know, over the next 10 years, I can create that for my kids. And, you know, so what does the next 12 months look like? Uh, surviving. And then mm -hmm. after that, like, that's the thing that motivates me to keep getting through everything. That's a so. great answer. We're in a season now where we're paying off some debts too. And so there's that season, right? Where you're like, you're spending and then you're getting money and like, it's great. But then if you have debts, you got to pay them off eventually. Yep. And sometimes you just got to crack down. That's not a fun season, right? Yeah. Because it's like, man, I, I'm doing so well, but mm -hmm. I have so much debt that I got to pay. It's like, so it feels yeah. like, it feels like you're working so hard and you're just like, even if you have big wins, it's just like, oh, great. Now I can pay these things off, you know? <laughs> yeah. So like, totally get that. That's completely understandable. I don't know. Like you're a, a mother, which is like unbelievable too, because you're running this business and then you're being mom. How has that balance been? Has that been like, what advice would you give to like a single mom entrepreneur going through? Oh all this? gosh, man, that one's really tough. I just hope that you're never in the debt situation that I'm in. I would avoid debt at all costs because once you have that over your head, it takes your energy. It's, it changes how you sleep at night and you know, how you can show up for your kids. It's, I think it's just, it's, it's the worst. And there is certainly good debt, you know, but when you, you know, the bills do, and if there's not money in the bank, you can't take a paycheck. Like that's a yeah. different level of stress. And you've got little people that are depending on you. Um, so I would say, you know, just be wise with your resources and don't get ahead of yourself. Um, like I said, we had a pretty strong year in 2021. And we, we still had debt, but like I was knocking it out and I felt like I was really mm -hmm. getting ahead. And then we had that one, I mean, real quick, one year um, kind of kicked us down a little bit. And if I had saved a little bit differently or spent a little bit differently personally, I would be in a different situation. Uh, but, you know, I got confident, I'm like look at what I've done the last two years and Everything is mm -hmm. on the right path, but it can change really quickly as when you are responsible for everything. Yeah. So just staying humble in how you're spending and planning for your future. Um, make sure you have a good nest egg of savings and are keeping as much in the business as you can. And don't rest on your laurels, I yeah. think, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because if you get comfortable, you know, then next thing you know, you're in a bunch of debt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think too, um, this might sound silly, but in my situation, like, uh, man, we're probably already getting towards the end. We had, I've had a really crazy couple of years. There's like a huge thing in here too that, uh, next episode, <laughs> I <have to> think <laughs> yeah. of. but, um, you know, I, I think the people in my business began to take care of me mm -hmm. instead of like the business. It was almost like protecting me from all of the chaos. And that was kind of an unhealthy um, thing for the business, too, because I mm -hmm. needed to carry a little bit more weight. For sure. Um, but also, I was probably trying to, like, avoid it as well sometimes because mm -hmm. it sucked. So, um, you know, just make sure I, I don't that would be for any business owner, single mom or mom or not. Um, just, like, stay present and make sure you're, like, got your finger on the pulse of all the big issues mm -hmm. it's hard not to lose yourself to your business and the the chaos that's going around you when i do the festivals it's like a like nothing else matters in my life but that and i have other yeah. businesses so that's not a good thing sometimes too like uh -huh. it's like but no, during that weekend especially nothing else matters and i mean like anything because events especially like bad things happen we've had the ambulance come every single day, and that's just normal right heat yeah. stroke or whatever like but like, I am so stoic with everything. Like everything's just like a business decision. I don't get sad. I don't get low. Cause I like my defense mechanism come, yeah. kicks in and I just have to make the decisions. And so like, I understand what you're talking about. Like when you're so in it and then my family also used to help me with my festival, like helping with the ticketing and stuff like that, which is awesome. But yeah. it's also the family dynamic and me trying to bark orders at like my mother as it work. my mom's like <laughs> a very strong willed Latina woman. That's uh -huh. not going to work. So like, I totally get it. 
you know, uh, the balance is insane. And I'm sure your kids will learn a lot from you, you know, yeah. of this whole situation. Um, and I think it's definitely for you too, like to journal and write down like this journey, because it's probably gonna be worth telling to them even, I mean, they're going through it now, but later down the road of like, yeah, because they probably know a lot of it, but they probably don't know maybe all of it. And so like, that's good for you to kind of yeah. take in and then marinate because it's probably going to take you a few years to finally look back and be like, oh, okay, this is, I can't believe I went through all of that. And yeah. Probably if you do inspect all of it right now, it's going to be too overwhelming. It's just something to be said about sometimes you just got to mow through it. Yeah. Just don't think about it, just mow through it, you know? Well, and I, there's certainly something to be said for like when you, once you're outside of it and you can see the situation you were in, yeah. you're just like, holy shit, yeah. like that was rough. Um. But yeah, when you're in it, you if you if you think about how hard it is, it'd be easy to implode. <laughs> For sure, yeah, yeah. Well, before we stop, um, we'll, we're gonna start landing the ship. Um, where can we find you? This is your camera right here. Oh, yeah. Tell us where to find you. So our our website is Epic Eyewear. It's spelled E P O C H Eyewear, and our niche is affordable, good quality sunglasses. So we've got everything from twenty to sixty dollars, and we have a discount code yeah. for the listeners as well. <laughs> yeah, and that's COSBP15, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we're excited. Yo, a lot of our visitors, you guys need to go check this, these out. They're great. We're going to probably wear them. Yeah, we're wearing them right now yeah. <laughs> for all the audio <laughs> listeners. <laughs> so go to the YouTube if you're listening on the audio. There and, we go. And like and subscribe and comment and do all that stuff too. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for giving a lot of keto, you know, key little uh, pieces of advice for everybody for sure. And just before we, we end the show, what pieces of advice would you give Reebs way back in the day, 10 years ago when she first started this business? Like what, what oh advice would you gosh. give her? Oh my gosh. I would say don't go into a business if you're not passionate about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and partnerships are really tough. Um, yeah. under, like get, get good business advice. Mm -hmm. You need more than one attorney looking over those contracts and someone looking out for your best interest as well. And the money for an attorney up front is much cheaper than the money for an attorney on the back end. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, just protect yourself. Ask someone to break the idea for you, tell you all the things that can go wrong, and plan for the worst. Yeah. Hope so for the best. Yeah. This is the business pod, the, C the, a bus the COS business podcast, and we love talking about business. And you have provided, I think, some, some great business advice from your experience and thank you for sharing your your journey this has been awesome well thank you i'm glad to be here all right yeah stay tuned for more episodes and we'll see you guys on the next one